Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's edition of Arkansas Live. I'm Happy Caldwell, and I'm so glad you've joined us all this week as we've discussed Psalm 91, God's covenant promise of protection and security. We'll conclude the, today's message uh, with the rest of this psalm, so stay tuned. I hope the Holy Spirit has reveal some very truthful information to you. Back over to Psalm 91, and I felt impressed of the Lord to share this with you. I hope it's uh, blessing you like it's blessing me. Uh, of course, we started off with building the foundation. This Psalm 91 is not um, an automatic protection and security. It's uh, based on your revelation knowledge of God, your constant companionship with Him, it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So uh, you have to abide, live, dwell in, be a constant companion with God. Your thoughts are on God all the time. And uh, you, you have to dwell, live, and abide in that secret place, that secret relationship. And number two, the other PowerPoint is, you must say of the Lord, this is your personal resolve, I not only believe it, but I say it. And we've gone through every verse and explained it. Now let's get down to verse, uh, let's see, seven. A thousand will fall at your side because it's, it's very evident we're not going to have time to finish this whole thing. We've only got one day and I've got half, another half page of notes here. A thousand shall fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Now, this is not to diminish the lives, not to offend anybody, the people that have died of the plague, the pandemic, the, the COVID-19, whatever. It's not to diminish or offend any of that. It, it, it's, it's simply to show you that when you're under this provision of protection and security, there are going to be casualties. And he says, a thousand will fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand but it'll not come near you. It's not that God didn't care about others and cared only about you. That's not it at all. God's, God's got no favorites. God's no respecter of persons. But there were, there were issues. There were consequences. There were all kinds of things that we don't know and will never know <clears throat> about different situations. A thousand will fall at your side, even in war. A thousand, I'm sure war veterans have wondered I had a very dear friend that he, he and I went through ROTC together in the college. And then he went in the Army, I went in the Navy. And he was a captain uh, when he came out. And he died, uh, everybody thinks he died of Agent Orange in Vietnam. But when he died, his daughter gave me his captain's bars. I wear them on Veterans Day uh, to, to honor him. But he was afraid, he was afraid to die because his whole uh, platoon had been wiped out but him. He carried survivor's guilt. And uh, many, many uh, military people have to deal with that. They see thousands die and 10,000 at your right hand, but it'll not come near you. Now, when you're under God's covenant and protection, you can rely on that. I say that every day. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. Now, you got to be real careful right here because God is not, nor should you call people that die or people that are extinguished. They, they are not wicked people, but he's talking about the recompense of the reward for evil, not necessarily those individuals. And we can verify that over in uh, uh, Proverbs 1 and Romans 1. The wicked, the perverted those that are in sin, committing sin, produce a recompense. AIDS was not the judgment of God on the homosexual. AIDS was the recompense of the reward. You sow the seed, you reap the harvest. Don't be deceived. It says in Galatians 6, God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. So whatever is sown is what is going to be rewarded. You reap what you sow. And he says, and the wicked, the reward of the wicked, those that have sown evil. 
You could say the whole nation. We've killed 63 million babies of our own people. 63 million babies unborn. We've murdered them in the mother's womb. That's wicked. That's sin. That's perversion. And, you know, it, the pandemic, the plagues, all the bad things that we're dealing with are a result of that wickedness, that sin. We have developed a culture, and I'll read it in a minute, where it said, we don't want anything to do with God. God said, I, I reproved, I, I rebuked. He said, they said, we don't, we don't want you. The New York governor, New York mayor, both said basically the same thing. We don't need God in New York. We don't want God in our city. We don't need God. So that, that's, that's wickedness. And it says, these are the rewards of the wicked. Uh, let, let's, let's go over to Exodus um, and uh, let's look at verse 12, uh, chapter 12, verse 13. I want to go back. I meant to go back to this the other day. This is the language. This is Moses at, at the Passover. Uh, he said, this is the Lord's Passover. And uh, in verse 14, it says, And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. You keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You keep it as a feast by ordinance forever. There's only one Passover, but we, we remind, we keep the feast of the Passover every year when we observe the Passover. And what the Passover was, was God said, if you put the blood of the lamb, this was the Old Testament priest system, you put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost and the death angel will pass over you. Well, now we don't have to kill a lamb and put the blood over the post because Jesus was the lamb that was slain from the foundations of the world. And he is the sacrificial lamb. And he died once for all sin. Now go over to Exodus uh, 8, 22, back up a few pages here. And let's look at another scripture. Exodus chapter 8 and verse 22. I will ever in that day, I will sever in that day the land of Goshen in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies dwell there. To the end you may know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. Now here, and I've, I've taught on this bef before, uh, you can go over to Exodus 9, 26, and it reaffirms uh, what I want to say uh, to you, Exodus 9, 26. Only in the land of Goshen were the children of Israel, where the children of Israel were, there was no hail. There are references to the land of Goshen, which was God's place of protection and security for Israel, just like we're discovering in Psalm 91. That's God's covenant promise of protection and security for his believers, his body of Christ. The land of Goshen was a place of protection and safety uh, in the uh, days of uh, the uh, famines and the plagues that came during Joseph's time. And the dream that God gave Joseph was to protect uh, the people of Israel. And so during that time of famine, uh, the Pharaoh told Joseph to bring his family to the land of Goshen and they could dwell there. The land of Goshen was a place in Egypt where it was called the best of the land. And it said their flocks multiplied, they grew and they prospered there. This is like Psalm 91. This is God's protection and security. Now there were people dying all around them, but they were living in the land of Goshen. It's not God's respecter of persons. These were wicked people. And the recompense of the reward came upon, upon them and they perished. But not Israel, not Joseph's family. They were protected in the land of Goshen. And you could say we're protected by Psalm 91. Uh, Only with your eyes shall you see the reward of the wicked. And, um, and let me go back over to Pro Proverbs uh, I, I want to see if I can fit this in here. Proverbs chapter 1, and let's look at verse 24. Because I have called, and you have refused, I have stretched out my hand, no man regarded, but you have said it not my counsel, you would take none of my reproof. 
I will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear comes. When your fear comes as desolation and your destruction comes as a whirlwind, then distress and anguish shall come upon you. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They'll seek me early, but they'll not find me. For they hated knowledge and they did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would take none of my counsel. They despised all of my reproof. They would none of my counsel despised all of my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple, marginal reference says, um, ease of the simple, the simplicity of following God and God's word. And the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. <coughs> That's why God said you don't have to be uh, afraid of the reward of the wicked. The reward of the wicked is a recompense of evil. It's a, it's a way of life. It's a life of those that consistently uh, push God away. I don't want God, don't need God. We don't want God in our society. We don't want religion. We don't want churches. We don't want Christianity. That wickedness eventually began to come back on those and their reward for their rebellion came with it. The evil, the plagues, the viruses, the murdering of 63 million baby children, the reward for all of that. God's not trying to get our attention. God's not trying to chasten us. He's not trying to correct us. That's not how he, God, that's not his DNA. But the pestilence, the plagues, all of the things that are happening, the rebellion in the culture, the uh, anti-government, the anti-Semitism, all of these things is a result, the reward of the wicked. They sowed seed and didn't even know it. Now, through the preaching of the gospel, people can know it. You got to stop killing babies. You got to stop uh, killing each other. <laughs> you got to stop uh, defunding the police. You got to stop Marxism. You got to stop all of these things that are contrary and against God. And that, that's what he means by, he says, and only with your eyes shall you see the reward of the wicked. That's what we're seeing right now. With our eyes, we're seeing the reward of the wicked. But we are like Israel in the land of Goshen. Look at the next one, next verse, number nine. Because you've made the Lord your refuge, your habitation, there shall no evil befall you, nor any plague come near your dwelling. Whoo, hallelujah. Wish, wish millions of people had known that they wouldn't have died of, of COVID. Wish millions of people had known that God had a covenant promise to protect you and provide security for you, but they didn't know it. The preachers didn't know it. The pastors didn't know it. So they couldn't teach the people. But according to the Bible, he says, no evil or no plague shall come near your dwelling. You remember me when I started teaching on the Olivet Discourse, Matthew 24, when the disciples asked Jesus, Master, can you share with us the sign of your coming, the end of the time, end of the days? And, and Jesus said, first thing, take heed, no man deceive you. And then he said, all these things must come to pass. He said, these are just the beginning of sorrows. Sorrows is referring to the great tribulation period. We're not in the tribulation period yet. What we are in is perilous times. What we're seeing is perilous times. Read about it in Timothy. Men be lovers of themselves, covetous, boastful, blah, blah, blah. And we're not in World War III. We're not in the tribulation period. We're not in any of those things. We're in perilous times. And he says here that these things must come to pass. I asked the Lord about it. Why can't we? Why well, didn't we not be able to stop this? He said, you can't stop it because it must come to pass. It's the beginning of sorrows. It has to come to pass because it's written. But what you can stop 
is you can stop it from coming on you and your family. There you go. You can stop it from coming on you and your household. It says the plague will not come your come near your dwelling. So there you have it. There's your protection, your covenant promise of protection and security. It, it's my perspective sharing this with you. It's not about vaccines. It's not about masks. It's about understanding and having the revelation of God's covenant protection against and for protection and security for you. Protection against the wiles of the devil. Protection against viruses. Protection against governmental overreach. Protection against socialism and communism and Marxism. The Bible says if you pray for those in authority, you'll live a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. You can have chaos going around you in every different direction. You can have chaos in your neighbor's yard and house and family. You can have chaos in your block. You can have chaos in your community, but it will not come against you. It will not touch you. It will not come near your dwelling because you've made the Lord your refuge. You've made the Lord your habitation. I'm not talking about legalism here. I'm not talking about falling into the trap that Job fell into. He said, the things that I greatly feared came upon me. That breaks the hedge of faith down and Satan comes in and bites you. No, I'm not talking about that. He's, he's talking about trusting the Lord, honoring the Lord, and letting the Lord honor his covenant promise to you, which was protect and secure. Protect you and secure, give you security. You get, you know, I, th I think about <clears throat> when I was a kid growing up in the 40s and 50s, <laughs> we never locked our doors. We never, we never had, we had locks on our doors, but my mama never locked them. You could drive into our carport, open the screen door and go right into our house any time of the day or night, any day, any night. Why? There was nothing locked. We had no fear. It was a culture that was absent of fear. We lived in what the TV program called happy days. We lived in happy days. And of course, we had been through a war, a world war, from 41 to 45. And, you know, the song, happy days are here again. <laughs> we sacrificed for the war effort. The country sacrificed. The, the country was affected by it. We lost thousands of young men and women uh, fighting that war. But after it was over, a new spirit of revival, a new spirit of, of patriotism emerged. And those same young men that went through the Great Tribulation period, fought World War II, came home and rebuilt America. I know because my father was one of them. And happy days were here again. Now, you couldn't tell it by some of them. Some of them were uh, wounded and maimed and crippled and had uh, uh, what we used to call shell shock post-traumatic stress syndrome now. And some of them came home majorly affected and impacted. Families lost loved ones. There was tragedy. There was death. But during that period of time, and we were still, I remember when we were still instructed uh, how to, when the siren went off, how to crawl under our desk if there was an air raid. It was a, it was a protection mechanism. But by and large, we had no fear, never locked our doors. We never, we never were afraid of anything or anybody. Well, it says here, because you've made the Lord your refuge, your habitation, no evil will befall you or any plague come near your dwelling. Now listen, listen to, God goes even a step further. Listen to the rest of this. Go over to uh, verse 10. Well, let me go to verse 11. Yeah, verse 11. He will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. <laughs> uh, he will give his angels charge over you to keep you 
in all your ways. They will bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You'll tread upon, he'll tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion, the dragon shall trample under feet because you've set your love upon God. Therefore, he will deliver you. I'm changing the tense of it so you can get a better understanding. He will set you on high because you've known his name. He'll, you'll call upon him and he'll answer you. He'll be with you in trouble. He will deliver you and honor you. And with long life, say it out loud, with long life, the marginal reference says length of days, with long life will he satisfy you and show you his salvation. The ultimate, all-encompassing, total salvation benefits, which is not just going to heaven. That's not... That's not all salvation was about. The Greek word sozo, salvation is all inclusive. I will show you my goodness. You know, when Moses, you know, uh, asked the Lord, he said, Lord, uh, you, you've got to give me a sign to show the people to show uh, that you're with us when they left Egypt. And he said, I will show you my goodness. Your goodness, your salvation, your protection your security. I'll show you my love. I'll show you my provision. I'll show you my health, my divine life, not just divine healing. This is all inclusive of the word salvation. He's going to show us his salvation. He will satisfy us with long life or length of days and show us his salvation. Now go over to Hebrews before we close. I want to read you this about the, the angels because it's very important that you understand angels are working with you. Angels are working with you. Hebrews chapter 1 and let's see, verse 13. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they the angels not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. You, if you're born again, if Jesus has come into your life and you've been born again, you are an heir of salvation. And that means angels are dispatched to take care of you to protect you, to keep you from falling, to keep you from being harmed. He says, with long life will he satisfy you and show you his salvation. Uh, one more scripture, go over to Proverbs chapter 3. Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 3. And let's look at verses 1 and 2. Proverbs 3, 1 and 2. Forget not my law. Let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to you. All of this is encompassed in salvation. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them upon your neck. Write them on the table of your heart. So you'll find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. Depart from evil. And he goes on and says, it'll be health to your navel, marrow to your bones. And then if you go down to, um, I, I like this, and I think this is one of the reasons that we have had um, problems in our culture. This is one of the sources of the problem in Proverbs chapter 1. Let's look at uh, uh, verse 8. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8. My son, hear the instruction of your father and forsake not the law of your mother. For they, the instruction of your father and the law of your mother, shall be an ornament or an adding of grace unto your head and chains about your neck, not, not binding chains, but decorative chains. 
The reason we're having problems in our culture today is because of the family breakup. Fathers and mothers were in there in their position for a reason. You take the father and the mother out of the family, either one or both, and the family can't function properly because God created it to function with a father and a mother. The father was to give instruction. The mother was to give the law, not, not the Old Testament law, the law of grace, social graces. She was to be the mother heart of God. So if you put everything in its proper perspective, especially where Psalm 91 is concerned, he that dwelleth in the secret place will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, the Lord is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. His truth is my shield and buckler. <laughs> Once you get this committed to memory and you begin to say it every day, if you can't remember it, go back and read it out of your Bible because it's what you say. I will say of the Lord. I will say of the Lord. He is my refuge. I'm going to make the Lord my refuge, the most high my habitation. Therefore, there shall no evil befall me, neither shall any plague come near my dwelling. He will give his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. And if, if you continue to to do this and develop this in your life and in your family and do it every day. You, you will partake of God's covenant promise of protection and security all the days of your life. You won't be afraid. You won't have to fear what any news media outlet tells you, what any medical uh, report comes across, what any government scandal, you won't have to be afraid of any of that. You won't have to be afraid of inflation, not being able to buy gas, food, groceries, protection. You won't be afraid of any of that because you know I, I, there's a young girl out in California, Jeannie, and I've been praying for her. We've known her since she was a child, and she's undergoing uh, cancer treatment. And she always sends us a, a post and says, God's got this. <laughs> she knows that God is going to take care of her. Thanks for joining me. Remember, Jesus is Lord of Arkansas and wherever you're watching too. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas 72221 or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com. Remember to follow VTN on Facebook at VTN Your Arkansas Christian Connection and follow Happy Caldwell on Twitter at Happy underscore Caldwell. VTN is on Roku. Search VTN in the channel store and add us to your lineup. Today's episode is available to watch on demand at VTNTV.com and click watch. You can also watch VTN via live stream at VTNTV.com.